This is my bio filter that has bio balls in it. As you can see, the fish boo is uh, pretty thick and I'm just about to clean it out. I have scooped out this side. I'm just waiting for the uh, fish poo to settle down a bit and I shall scoop it out with a finer scoop. For the bio balls I use this to scoop them out, it's nice and simple. And I have them in a container here that I will wash them out with using the same pond water that this filter actually filters. That way I maintain the biology of the uh, biofilter. In this uh, long pipe I actually have um, some very fine mesh that also catches the uh, fish poo. And it just uh, it has a split on the bottom here that you can see. And that's where the water actually filters out through the bio balls, out that outlet and then down into my makeshift stream that I have. I never clean out these IBCs because they don't actually get dirty and I have very few plants in them because they their main purpose is to add minerals to the water out of the gravel. This is the chicken mesh that is inside that 300 millimeter pipe. The pipe on the bottom there is the inlet to this filter out of my main pond. And this is the uh, chicken wire. Those holes are about, um, I don't know, 15 mil in diameter. Now, I wash this in my seedling pond. My seedling pond has no fish and hence no pump. So I wash all my bio balls and everything in there and the fish poo feed my seedlings. This was full of bio balls. Now I scoop the bio balls out of this container into this bucket. And I use the outlet pipe from this uh, biofilter to wash the bio balls. And it's actually quite simple. That's pretty much all you have to do to clean the bio balls. And you can see how nice and clean they are. Now these have the same biological surface area as scoria. I then put the uh, chicken wire over the top of it and I pour that dirty water into this IBC because I reuse that water. Now I soak some koi blocks in that water and I use that for the passion fruit and tomatoes and all, all the larger plants that I then sell at the markets. As you can see I use um, reuse milk cartons for my plants and that actually makes them very easy to carry around and they grow quite happily in there. Now here it is, um, the operation is complete the whole thing takes me about 20 minutes. Now I don't clean all that um, stuff off the sides of my biofilter because I like to maintain uh, some of the biology in the tank. It doesn't have to be pristine clean after you've cleaned it. Now I get a lot of people who know everything tell me you cannot buy, um, grow plants in bio balls. Well, I'm here to tell you you're wrong. Right, I have a variety of plants in this IBC which is filled with bio balls 
and they're growing beautifully. There's a pak choy there. There's a cabbage there. I have lemon balm, kale. There's silver beet. And there's more kale there. Um, I have uh, the red vein sorrel. I've got a tomato bush here which needs to be pegged. I've got beans growing in here. And I have a variety of other herbs as well. There's um, basil. That is the Queen of Siam basil. And one of my popular sellers, of course, is the watercress. And this is also all just growing in bio balls. And I've got a capsicum growing here. Now before I put the koi blocks into the water to rehydrate, I add some chelated iron, which is also manufactured in Queensland. It's a DTPA, chelated iron, but only 4% iron. Now because this is not going into an aquaponic system, I can use this one because it is stabilized with urea. What I also add is wood vinegar. Now this is liquid carbon. I use it weekly on all my plants at a 200 to 1 mixture. It's absolute magic. System complete, nice and clean. Bubbling up nicely. Good water flow. And this is my last um, system before it goes into the water. Again, uh, bio balls with the odd handful of gravel, etc. And then back into my main pool. I planted these a few years ago. have no idea what they are, but they're thriving. 